pets. They bring us so much IRL joy. Here's why their pixelated equivalents are just as good for us. It's a question that's troubled humanity's greatest minds since we first learned to digitise fur. Can you pet the dog? And although that's a deliberately flippant way of opening this video, there is a logic behind it. Pets can make us happier, healthier and calmer. The question is, can their virtual counterparts do the same? The short answer is yes, but not in quite the same way. The longer, more interesting answer is contained in the next 10-ish minutes of this lovingly crafted video, which we'd love you to watch. And while we're asking for favours, why not subscribe and ring the bell before you do? Lovely. So, to celebrate National Pet Day, which, quite frankly, should be every day, let's look at why even virtual pets are good for us. To start with, we need to establish two things. Firstly, how interacting with pets in real life is good for us. And secondly, do we really love video game animals that much? We could do a video about just the first point, but then this would be a channel about dogs, not games. So to summarise, pet owners are less likely to suffer from depression than those without. They have lower blood pressure in stressful situations and playing with a dog or cat can elevate levels of serotonin and dopamine, which helps calm and relax us. And broadly speaking, the feeling is mutual. Dogs even love looking at pictures of smiling humans, which is maybe the most wholesome thing that's ever happened. For the second point, there are a few things to consider. First of all, many of us do things in games just to see if we can. Can we flush the toilet? Can we break the barrels? Can we kick our teammates? For some people, petting the dog is more about experimentation than connection. But, on the other hand, we love interacting with virtual beasties. It's the reason you've been able to squidge a menagerie of creatures in six Assassin's Creed games. It's the reason the big selling point of Fable 2 was a canine companion. And if you're in any doubt about our collective obsession with in-game animals, you only need to look at the Can You Pet The Dog Twitter account for confirmation. 400,000 followers and endless analytical tweets about virtual dog cuddles. It's probably why that Microsoft screensaver with the fish was so popular. Watching an aquarium can help reduce muscle tension and lower pulse rate. And this is basically the same as the real thing. Hmm, relaxing. We'll get on to the empathy upgrade we get from even virtual pets in a second, but it's important to look at the companionship offered by animals in games. Hands up who chose dog meat in Fallout 4, or cheeseburger, peaches or boomer in Far Cry instead of a human or two. Sometimes it's okay to reject more vocal companions with their set scripts and, let's face it, sometimes really annoying attributes. And just head out into the world with some pleasantly silent, or at least snuffly, friends instead. While it's nice to have the support of teeth and claws in a game like Far Cry for maximum destruction, something like Blair Witch really turns pet ownership into a kind of security blanket. Bullet here doesn't make it nearly as bad to go into the big bad woods. But you'll also find yourself far more worried about him than you are about yourself. The relationship goes both ways. It's lovely to have company, but this is someone you care about too. And it's a device that developers understand. We can't pat the dogs or scritch the eagles for no reason. Pets pull us further into digital worlds, making us truly care about what happens. There's a reason that there's an entire site dedicated to whether movie dogs get a shortcut to heaven at doesthedogdie.com. We all care, sometimes too much. 
Thankfully, most of the time, our chosen animal companions happily respawn even if they're downed. But even knowing that they've got your pixelated back means more than you can put into words. Or, well, pats. Hey, Horatio. One of the things that virtual pets can instill in younger players is a sense of empathy and humanity. A study by Yu Feng Sai of Simon Fraser University looked at how caring for a virtual pet compared to the positive developmental effects of a real animal. The study was based on the evidence that caring for a real creature was shown to be associated with higher levels of empathy and the humane treatment of animals. It then sought to prove if the same was true of virtual ones. The game in question was Nintendogs, which, yes, we know isn't a PC game, but it's perfect. After playing with a virtual pet dog for three weeks, lucky kids, their scores on the Bryant Empathy Index increased significantly. The study showed numerous examples of children investing in the care of their virtual pet and avoiding any behaviour that might scare or upset their digital doggos. They built emotional connections with their animals, treated them like the real thing and felt reluctant to leave them. Better yet, some children who couldn't have pets IRL because of things like allergies or space limitations could still experience the benefits of animal companionship via Nintendogs. It's not quite as effective as the real thing, oh good boy Monty, but it's definitely better than nothing. Many games that feature pets, such as The Sims 4, are essentially stripped-down life sims. They're about repeated management of simple tasks, gentle progression and regular maintenance. And managing your sims is a lot like looking after a virtual pet. Albeit one that can get famous and have career aspirations to be a detective. And there are actual pets inside The Sims too. It's like a pet turdurkin. Just try not to think too hard about that. Just let it wash over you. A pet turdurkin. But exactly why are life management games so good for us? In an article on CNBC's Make It, Professor Chris Ferguson of Stetson University explains how these games are especially helpful when our needs aren't being met in real life. They give us a sense of control and apply rules that make sense to us, which is especially important when things outside our control in real life feel chaotic or frightening. Our daily existence might be disrupted, but that feeling of continuity we get from simple life management games lets us feel like things are continuing normally. And, in fact, these kinds of tasks, which can seem dull, repetitive or sedate by the side of more action-oriented games such as Call of Duty, are perfect when we're feeling external pressure. Not only are they easy to master, meaning there's no stress from getting good, they're also a reminder that eventually things outside the game will return to normal too. And yes, we know that COD had a dog. It's not quite the same. Is it? Finally, perhaps most interestingly of all, we're only just starting out on our journey with digital pets. Until now, most animals in games have been mechanics disguised as living things. We might love Roach from The Witcher, for example, but it's hard to ignore that he's essentially a sprint button that you have to whistle. And Skyrim's dogs were basically a moderate attack buff, and one that we left at home for fear they'd accidentally get killed. See entry 3. Anyway, game AI is getting more complex all the time and future developments promise a depth and subtlety that might allow us to connect with virtual animals on a whole other level. Again, we have to step away from PC games for an example, but Trico's AI in The Last Guardian is a useful illustration. Creator Fumito Ueda intentionally imbued Trico with independence and a will of its own. Something that jarred with some players when the giant cat-bird-dog monster wouldn't do exactly as it was told. 
But in truth, this is far closer to how animals act in real life. They don't always come when you whistle. They bark at things they don't understand, and they chew wires, even though you've specifically told them not to. Yeah, we'll just leave this G502 Lightspeed link on screen now. Yes, we went there. The point here is that as game AI continues to develop, we'll find fresh, more nuanced ways of interacting with our digitised companions. And as good as pretend pets might be for us, the extended benefits of virtual pooches may yet to be discovered. And there you have it, a head patting, belly rubbing, tail wagging examination of why pets in games are brilliant. Give this video a treat by hitting the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and ring our notification cat bell to know when we next need walkies. We'll just leave the fish screensaver going here. Hmm, lovely.